Hello, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Andy Morales, and welcome to the first episode of Jammed Up Sessions Live. Um, I think I'm going to sneeze. I think. I'm trying not to. It's kind of funny, though. <laughs> I'm kind of being a little spontaneous right now because I felt inspired. So, I wanted to just bring up some things. I wanted to explain a few things and read some poetry. Not going to do a lot. But I do want to say that I apologize to a lot of people. I'm not mentioning names, but I do want to... I, I do owe an apology because I seem to have built friendships and all of a sudden I kind of vanished. Uh, one of the biggest struggles I have in my life is trying to maintain a intimate long-term relationship with my peers. And it's hard and sometimes I tend to avoid forming them because it's just easier to be emotionally safe. And I'm really working on that. There's been a lot of people who, let me not say a lot, there's been some people on the in the Instagram poetry community that have reached out to me, and I'll say this, um, I haven't really said much to a lot of people, and that's because I tend to be to myself, so I was in a real, real bad way, I was in a rut, you know, not um, my marriage was great. It's just, you know, I was just going through some things. You know, my living situation with my wife and my son was just not that great. It's, a, it's better now, but it wasn't that great. And I don't owe an explanation, and that, that's all there is to it. But I had to really try to figure out what was right, what was wrong, what was priority, what was to be done next. And I started seeing things of myself that I didn't like, which is why I had to kind of Step back and rebalance myself. And balance is very difficult to have. And I'll admit, I, I, when it came to having a community page, for those who don't remember, it was Jammed Them Down, which became Jam, um, Ink Sessions Live, which eruptively disbanded and deleted itself without warning. And I'm going to just leave it at that. And I just wasn't inspired. And I've realized, I believe, I got caught up in the bullshit. Let's just be honest. You know, um, I got caught up in the bullshit. I got caught up in the whole, hey, um, I liked the, the idea of having a community page because it was very inspiring. But not really understanding a lot of things. And I'll just leave that there. Yeah, I got caught up in the bullshit, you know, the likes, the viewership, and, you know, it's not a ratings war. And certain people have warned me about that. And I don't know if I can speak for everybody else, but I will say that this was not intentional. Maybe we don't realize that. Um, there's a quote that I like to tell myself sometimes saying, fuck the algorithm. <laughs> um, I remember this one poet who went on here to rant about that actually there's been multiple people who have made these rants about the community and the good and the bad and the ugly um people have asked me my personal opinion about it and I have always refused to answer. I've always kind of dodged the question. Why? Because it's not about me. It's not about what this was. But I will say the main reason why I decided I was not going to, you know, I was just done with the whole community pages because I thought that's what I needed to have in order to support people. And I realized, um, no, that's not the case. So, to my former team mates of uh, Jammed Them Down that officially came to um, Ink Sessions Live, I'll say this, you know, I apologize to each and every one of you. You know, um, 
even though I never approached some of you about some things, but I will say that I apologize. I will be tagging people on this to listen, and I hope you listen to this podcast. But at the same time, um, I never meant no harm. I'll put it that way. I meant no harm. I never meant to hurt anybody. I never meant to disrespect anybody. And it's just something that, you know, I'm really not that way, if that makes sense. You know, um, and and I'm just leave it just there. So, so I, I don't need a community page and I'm actually honestly okay with that. And I will say this, there was one particular poet that made me see that. Um, someone that I consider a friend. Uh, I'm going to keep her anonymous just out of respect because I don't want to mention names. But she made me see that a lot. And this was someone that was also on the team. And at the end of the day, I realized I'm okay if I didn't have that. It was fun and it was such a great journey. I feel like I really, really recognize myself. And I had more than one. Because I also had a Christian community page called Psalms United, which was with two other people. And I realized, and after talking to certain people, I realized that particular page was done a little bit prematurely. It was premature. And I just also wanted to apologize to those people as well. And it is what it is now. So I've decided. I, I, I mean, not that I've decided. So I, I got inspired. And I decided I'm going to take it my way. And that's it. Um, screw everything else. And at the end of the day, I'm going to run at my own pace. I don't need a community page for that. I said, hey, I'll use my page. And I'll have a page for the podcast. And I'll just be, I'll post on both pages. And yeah, that's it. So I was originally going to do a thing where it was going to be a clip preview on the podcast page, but then the actual full length episode will be on Spotify and all that other stuff. And it will. But I also decided I'm going to upload the whole episode moving forward on Instagram too. Like I might as well. So expand the horizons because you never know who's listening. And I hope I hope people do listen to it. But I don't know if it's kind of taken away from some things. But it is what it is. So, with all that being said. um, I hope everyone's doing okay. Because this pandemic has been crazy. So many true colors are coming now. I've actually had f- certain friends that. Have really turned my backs on me during this time. People that I had stopped talking to me for no reason. I didn't even do anything. Or at least that's what it came out. That's how I see it in my eyes. But I figured I do want to address that Ink Sessions Live no longer exists. Jam Them Down no longer exists. This is Jam Se- Jam Them Sessions Live. And the backstory basically with all this is basically the fact that Jam is my actual initials. Juan Andres Morales, but please don't call me Juan. That's just weird. Um, the only people who call me Juan is people at work, and that that's just crazy. So please don't jam. Da, da, da. No. So um, so I want to have fun with it. I do. I, it's not gonna be all me all the time. It's just a start for this second season, episode one of the second season of Jam Them Sessions Live. But I will be having guests, and if you want to be a part of this with me. Where, hey, I want to be a guest. I want to have a conversation. I want to tell my story. Then, hey, send me a DM. We can do something. And I don't see why not. Different walks of life. Doesn't have to be religious. Doesn't have to be poetry. Hey, I I know people who do music that I plan to have them as guests as well. Let's all, you know, build this community into a whole other level. Um, so anyway, 
So as far as community pages go, I am done with all that shit. I'm going to have fun my way and that's it. The first piece I'm going to read, because I want to read some things that I like. It is by Stacy underscore Conventry underscore is underscore here. And the title of this piece is called B. There's no arithmetic to solve or puzzle pieces missing. There's no reason for andronoma. There's no measuring stick separating right from wrong. All there ever is and all there ever was, love. When the question has no answer. When the cold air wears a cloudy sky. When the thought of giving up brings you down. There's no win or lose. Nothing between here and there defines reality. And illusions are fantasies that ache the mind instead of the heart. Love. In waves of light and sound. Hellos and goodbyes. Everything is nothing up and down. And hate is the only thing that should not have a home. And that piece is called B. And that's by Stacy Conventry. Her handle is Stacy underscore Conventry underscore is underscore here. So the reason why I love this piece so much is because I relate to so many levels. And one thing that really hit me the most is when the question has no answer, when the cold air wears a cloudy sky, when the thought of giving up brings you down, there's no win or lose, nothing between here and there defines reality. And illusions are fantasies that ache the heart. No, I'm sorry, that ache the mind instead of the heart. Like that hit me so hard. Because one of the biggest struggles of my life is acceptance, right? Accepting is the difficult, it's the most one of the most difficult things that I struggle with in my life. Because Sometimes there are going to be questions that have no answer. And sometimes the thought of giving up does bring us down. There is no, sometimes there isn't just a win or lose. Sometimes it's just nothing. The part that says nothing between here and there defines reality and illusions are fantasies that ache the mind instead of the heart. I know exactly how that feels like because, and not to get too personal, but when I was a child, I struggled a lot with my mind. I was sheltered growing up. And because I was sheltered, my mind went into these fantasy lands. These things that it felt so real. And it is it really is an illusional thing. Because when I had to snap back into reality, the thought of that thing not being real... Or that life not really being real. It hurts my mind. But sometimes I wonder. But did it also hurt my heart right? Because me personally. I was always taught that the heart is so deceitful. That wherever the heart goes the mind follows. And it hurts so bad. Because I was never given love and affection. I was never given that attention. That, that that brother or sister or family interaction. That togetherness. I've never had that growing up. Until now. And you know, I had to get on a religious standpoint. Because I'm a firm believer of Jesus Christ. That's just who I believe in. Personally in my heart. And yeah I neglect this as well. Because my new self and old self. Which it's, it, the point is. It's the whole aspect of it that I truly believe that my heart hurts from all the hurt that I've been through that no one really took the time to really sit down with me no one really took the time to correct a lot of things that like when I wanted some correction done nothing was done about it and I had to just shut the hell up and just take it you know, and it hurts. It hurts, you know. But the greatest thing about that is that hate is the only thing that should not have a home. And it's true. Because 
I was angry for a long time. I was resentful for a long time. And, and, and I felt like sometimes those things turned into hate. But what was I hating? And was I hating those things for the wrong reasons? And, and it, it's, it boils me up. It hurts. It, it, it fires me up in such a way that I start to hate myself. I hated the man. I was. I hate the man I used to be. And to me, it's like, it just blows my mind, you know. And we talk about love, but I wrote a piece a while back saying that love is a four-letter word that we've overcomplicated for so many years. And it's so true because everybody has their own definition of love. And not every form of love we receive, it's the correct or right form of love. Because love is supposed to be a beautiful thing, but we've overcomplicated to a point that sometimes we start to hate love. It's it's the craziest thing, you know? So that's... Um, I don't know. But uh, that, that's, that's how it spoke to me. So the next poet I'm going to read, it is someone that I consider a brother in Christ. He's a very genuine person. He is someone that I've communicate, I communicate with him on from time to time. And we talk about real life stuff. We talk about personal stuff. And I'm very honored to know this man. So he goes by the handle of Poetry by Hyro. If you're not following that man, definitely follow that guy. I love his pieces. It's very, like the imagery is so profound. And he writes in the style of um, surrealism. And I actually didn't understand surrealism too much until he introduced it to me. And it's, again, it's such an interesting image. Like, if you look up surrealism, just in general, you'll see the, it, the most interesting images there. And I love that. So, and, and I think I, and I actually have said this to him, but I want to learn how to write like that, like in surrealism, because it's so interesting. So the piece I'm going to read is an untitled piece, I believe, uh, or is, or maybe this is the title It's called, I don't feel like it. I don't know if that's the title of the piece or that's just something he said in the, like, just because, but anyway, it goes like this. In the early fool's day, I am the biggest noise, and you take me for the breath that I am silently drinking my coiled fears. But I speak and notice nothing, breathlessly, twice too simple. Not behaving like the spit of the iceberg, in the early fool's day, I am the biggest idiot, and I'd rather be with those who abuse sex than die, without having lived and loved enough to say what really matters and that piece is by poetry by Hyro. so i'll tell you what caught my eye this one line they says i'd rather be with those who abuse sex than die without having lived and loved enough to say what really matters so who abuse sex like i was thinking this when i first read it I actually read this a couple of days ago to myself and I was just because I like so yeah maybe I don't always comment on poetry but I do read the stuff you know but that that's very interesting when you say abuse sex there's so many directions that you can take this and one thing I thought about was how us men we do abuse sex and what do I mean by that well like when we're in a relationship when I'll say this, when I was young, I used to believe that just because we were boyfriend and girlfriends, we had to have sex as much as possible because, you know, why not? My girlfriend, I want to have sex with you. But it gets to a point where we actually abuse it to a point where now the girl gets turned off by some things. The girl is not going to want to have sex with you anymore. And then it's like she'll come up with some excuses as to why she, you know, like she'll kind of brush it off or dodge it off so she doesn't have to do it with you and it's very very it's very interesting i have to say you know that that line who abuse sex because i know for a fact in my first relationship i kind of i could say i i've i've abused it 
and it's it annoyed her, you know. But that's because I had that mentality. Oh, but you're my girlfriend. We're supposed to do that. Not really understanding the essence of it, right? Because the women's body is very delicate to a point where if we're not careful, you know, and even when us, our bodies, period, is is very delicate. But you know what I mean? Like it's just, it's a very delicate situation because. You know, you're not just having sex and then that's it. Okay, and that's it. No, there's... um, If you look at it from a spiritual standpoint, you don't know what form of energy you're feeding yourself, if that makes sense. And it's uncomfortable sometimes when we don't know. So that's what I got out of that. And then... Or at least that's how it spoke to me. And then another thing was, I am the biggest noise. See, I looked at it as the noise around us. Because we're surrounded by noise, we're surrounded by people, things, situations. And one thing I used to say about silence was that um, one thing I've always thought about was the fact that, you know, sometimes it's okay to be silent. But when the silence gets too loud, what happens then? And I feel like the same thing with noise, when the noise gets too loud how do you react or put it this way when the low when the noise gets too low where now you can't hear the noise as much you're gonna probably want to wish that that noise did not lower itself the volume of the noise right because our minds is like a sponge right so it absorbs so much things memories and stuff like that And I feel like sometimes, like I know for me in my walk with the Lord, I'm surrounded by a lot of noise where there's so much noise in my head that I can't even concentrate on what I'm trying to do or how I want to talk to the Lord. You know, I want to talk to God. I want to pray to him. But the noise in my head is so crowding out space that's like like a hard drive. Like, okay, there's too much stuff here. We got to erase it. And I saw a post the other day about noise that someone said, if there's a lot of us that don't hear from God. And the reason why we don't hear from God, because we have all these noise, all these voices in our heads or all these, all the noise, like basically a lot of stuff going on in our minds that a lot of us refuse to turn it off. But then I'm thinking, well, how do you do that? How do you turn off? And then. Sometimes we have noise, but then there's the biggest noise of them all. And the biggest noise to me is the biggest, the one thing that you struggle with in your mind. The one thing that at the end of the day, it's like, okay, this won't go away. And I I think about in the Bible where um, Paul had the thorn in his flesh. And it was that thing that no one knew about. But it bothered him. But sometimes that big noise is probably the thing that we need to keep us grounded, to keep us humble. Because maybe it's the thing that calms us down. But sometimes what calms you down can be very toxic, if that makes sense. So this is how that piece spoke to me. And this is, again, I love when I can take a piece, dissect it. Even if that's not what he was talking about. But that's the way it spoke to me. You know, so that's why I, that's that's my um, intake on this piece. So definitely check him out. And he actually has a book on Amazon called A Psalm of a Thousand Daughters and Other Poems. And that's on it's available on the Kindle and paperback as well. So definitely check that out. So that was Poetry by Hiro. And yeah. So the next poet I'm going to read, she goes by the handle of underscore silent dot lover underscore. Her name is Natalie A. Cerna, and Natalie was one of the first people that welcomed me into the poetry community. This is when she used to run the page, Your Heart Beats Loud, and she was doing her stuff every Tuesday night, along with Brett B. Allen Hart. Um, She was one of the first people that welcomed me into the community. She was the first community page that you know, not only featured me, but like reached out, say, hey, if you ever want to talk, you know, and, and you know, I'm here, you know, and, and I have certain poets that I do talk to from time to time. 
Um, some people I haven't spoken to in a while, but the point is, you know, when, you know, it, you notice too, all right, I kind of blame Catfish for this, the show, because Catfish gives social media such a bad rap, and not all social media is bad. And it's crazy to me how there really is a sense of community out there that you could have a communication and build some kind of foundational relationship with, you know, in that way. And she's one of those people that truly exemplifies love and light. That's that's her motto, and she always lives by that. And she's again, she's one of those people that, you know. She's not afraid to talk about the real stuff. I know she's talked about her mental health. She's talked about her personal stuff in life that she's been able to overcome. But either way, uh, she's one of those people that, you know, she, she's one of those people that you can have a friendly conversation with. A lot of intellectual conversations. And she's one of those people that I'm honored and privileged to know her. Um, I've actually done a few lives with her in the past. Um, actually, my first duo live I ever did was with her on her page. So it was pretty cool. I was honored to do that, be a part of that. And I'm excited for that, you know. So um, the last thing we did together was the prompt for your, when Mars was ours prompt. And... Um, Originally, it was supposed to be her and Stephanie Lamb poetry, but you know, life happens, you know, it is what it is. So me and her ended up doing the live, which was great. I had fun. And this was before Instagram. Um, we were able to save lives, which is complete bullcrap now. I'm like, really now? Come on, guys. So anyway, um, so the title of this piece I'm going to read, it is called Broken Can Be Beautiful 2. And it goes like this. 205 days from start to end. Then it began the endless stretch to see just how far we can bend before we break or keep breaking. At least for me, we couldn't stay apart. It was the teether of our hearts keeping us together. It was another 22 days we continued this phase where we existed but didn't. A constant reminder of what couldn't. Bending so far. Hearts broke, leaving a scar so deep, even for me. So you said goodbye. Awful things were said that day, but something inside me told me to stay. To fight silently, patiently. We'll wait and see. It was another 38 days later. I woke up and decided I deserved better. I deserved more than to be just a screen. Someone to talk to, only conveniently, or send me a meme. I deserved to be loved the way I needed to be. I deserve the passion I give so freely. So, this time I said goodbye. And no one knows just how hard I cried that day. A small part of me died. However, from those ashes, beauty will bloom. And a magnificent garden will rise again soon. Because sometimes, broken can be beautiful too. And that piece was by Natalie A. Cerna. She goes by the handle of underscore silent dot lover underscore so this piece i definitely relate to it because i again i, I remember my first relationship that i don't know because you know even my second relationship i can say to that um it felt like a long time but it was really maybe like a year and six months or my first relationship was two years but it was so crazy because when things don't work anymore, that's just what it is. Because we all want to be with somebody and we like the idea of being with somebody. But sometimes just being with someone is not going to work because if you're not happy, sometimes depending on the circumstances, it's not easy to just walk away like that. And sometimes when things get weird, sometimes we fight just to be there because you know I know for me personally I was always taught that you know through thick and thin you make the thing work no matter what at all by all means necessary that's the way I grew up you know so if you left somebody you know oh well you didn't fight hard enough or you 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 didn't put more effort to making that relationship last or actually trying to save the relationship 
And that's the way I was taught, you know, and a lot of people I know don't actually see it that way. But it's interesting because even through all that, um, it's, it's still an interesting aspect of relationships too. But, you know, I know for me personally, I don't want to say just a boyfriend, girlfriend relationship. How about a friendship relationship where you have this friend that you've known for so long, but then what happens when the friendship is just no meaning behind it anymore, you know? And that's just how this piece spoke to me because I think, like, for example, I've had friends I've known for so long, but it comes to a point where, okay, if you're not adding value to my life or you're not adding some kind of substance where it's going to keep me growing and lift me up, then why am I still around you? You know, that's that's the way I see it, you know? And if I bring into the things of God, if you're not pouring into my life the way you know, we should be pouring to each other's life, lifting each other up and, and getting us closer to the things of God, then then I, I don't need to be around you. Now, there's a lot of people who don't agree with that. They feel like, oh, well, you need to stick it out because you're in their life for a reason. And yeah, that's true. But there are some times where it's okay because, you know, again, it, it, enough is enough. And if that's what it is, that's what it is, you know. Sometimes there's signs that point to a direction like, okay, you can obviously see that it's just not going to work. You know, so that that's that's how I took that piece. So that is Natalie Cerna. And I just wanted to say she has a book. And the title of this book is called Dangerous Elysium, a Collection of Poetry. And it's actually out on Amazon.com. And it's actually $9.99. Only in paperback format. So, yeah. So, the next and last poet I'm going to read, it is by Jared and the House. So, what can I say? Jared is one of those people that I can honestly say that he is one of the most realist, most talented, most visionary person I've ever known in my life. He's one of those people that, like, if you if you don't know who that guy is, you have to follow that man. Um, he's been through so much, and the way he shares his stories, and the way he describes the moments, you know, and he's so descriptive. He's so like, hey, I'm gonna tell how it is. Look, it sucks. Whatever. Like, this is what it is. And and that's why I like about him because it's hard to find people like that. And I know one thing we have in common: we do believe. In the Lord Jesus Christ, you know, um, you know, everybody, ha everybody has their views, and that's fine. I'm not trying to throw religion or anything like that. Um, but he's actually helped me a lot in so many ways that I can't even imagine. Like even through his lives, uh, the last time I saw his live was, oh man, this was last year. It's been a while because I again I'm just slowly going back into the live of Instagram and stuff like I mean the live the, the 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 flow of Instagram like I said earlier I'm doing it my way and that's it but um he's one of those people that he's not afraid to tell like it is like he's like if he thinks you're full of shit about something he's gonna flat out tell you like he's not gonna lie to you he's not gonna bullshit you and that's what it is and he's not afraid to be himself and I love that about him and the thing I love about his lives is the fact that it's so genuine. It's so intimate. Like, you feel like as if he's right there in front of you. And it's so cool, you know? And he'll have guests over. As a matter of fact, speaking of guests, um, I said earlier when I was reading Natalie's piece, you know, she was one of the first people that I, I've, you know, went live with. And speaking of Natalie, uh, the way I found him was through her because she was a guest on his live called The House Live. So that's how I found out about Jared. And I'm honored to know this man. Um, He's awesome. And um, again, he's he's pretty awesome, man. And, and like, if you're not following him, definitely follow this man. He's awesome. Awesome, awesome dude, man. Very intelligent, too. So... I'm going to be reading a piece from him, and I, I hope I don't butcher this piece, man. Because, you know, because everybody has a piece, and they read it in a certain style. And it's like, okay, I, I, I'm already going to tell you straight up. There's no way I'm going to read it as good as he does. Like, <laughs> that's not even, I, I can't even come close to this. So, anyway, so 
the piece I'm going to read is called Moon Dust Prayer 3. So I'm going to read a description and I'm going to read the piece. Another Moon Dust Prayer for you. This one is a throwback to February 2016. Round about the time I began to go nocturnal and find my first flush of infatuation with my Lady Moon. It seems sad, sort of pathetic at first to me, making a cold rock in space stand in front of my non-existent love life. Nearly four years on, and I found her to be more than worthy of my adore. She has returned it all tenfold back to me. Tell me about your awakening to her charms. Hey, thanks for staying on the ride with me too. You. I see you. Love me this way. A hiding place when I need to be unseen. Seeing only you by silken lights. Now lay me down from dizzy heights. Make night of noon, my lady moon. A nocturn soothing as 10,000 mothers humming silver whispered kisses, hushing down their babies into bed by softest light. Sing this to me, my lady moon, please say. Dream sweet till day, sweet boy. I'll stay beside you here all night. I'll stay. My lady, love me this way. Wow. So... I, I really enjoyed this piece a lot. This is pretty cool. Um, so I'm going to tell you what I think about this piece, the way it spoke to me. So this piece to me is very unique. I love the words he uses. Like I thought about it of, you know, and now that I know his little backstory about this piece. But even that, when I first read it, I saw myself in a peer. Not just any period. Um, I don't know if um if you if you're from Long Island, I'm not I don't live in Long Island, but if you've ever been to Long Island in New York, there's this peerish um water thing in um in Amityville. This is uh I'm gonna say two miles away from the Amityville house. And me and my friends went there one time and it's so beautiful. Like at night, like it gets so dark and you could actually see the freaking stars. Like it's so amazing. And if it's like a really, really good night, you'll see the moon. So anyway, so the way I saw myself there and I'm just sitting down on this bench because there's like a bench you could sit at. And I saw myself just basically thinking about someone I care about the most, right? And I'll say this, um, I've had love life, I've had love life, I've had a love life that didn't really exist either. Um, and I think that's okay, you know, and I saw myself as, I'm like just thinking about life, I'm mesmerized by everything around me, right? Like, I'm singing a song or singing a poem to... To nature, to the moon, right? But then I see this woman sit right next to me, and we're both just talking about how fascinated we are with the moon, uh, with the moon. And somehow during that moment, we just start to kiss, right? It's it's weird, right? And it's it's, it's because I I've had imaginary moments that I wish happened to me like that. <laughs> And I'm not going to get all crazy and be like, yeah, we had sex. No, like, I mean, all jokes aside, it's just, you know, that's the way I saw it. And it was from that moment we got to know each other. And somehow that thing made us a connecting force that, okay, here's my number. Here's my Facebook. Here's my Instagram. Hey, if you're not from here, where you live, let's let's drive around. Let's go to other places of nature and let's talk about this thing this connection that we have right now that's the way it spoke to me that's the imagination that came to me as i'm re reading this piece and um one thing that definitely i actually saw her singing an original song that she wrote and you know the moon is there and it's still at a night place, you know, where because when you go more deep in Long Island, there's an actual spot, a pit spot thing that you can stop at. At was that I ninety five? I I don't drive that well, 
I, I don't drive that well. I don't drive at all, but I have friends that drive into places. And before, I think it's before you hit, like, I think it's after Montauk or something. There's like a uh, highway-ish dead end thing. And there's like a lighthouse thing. I don't even know how to explain it. I, I suck at explaining. But I saw us parking the car there and we're just sitting on top of the car and we're just, and she starts singing. And her voice is so soothing, so beautiful. And it goes, and her lyricism is going along with the scenery that's around us. And we just, we, we just start enjoying intimacy even more. And it's, it's crazy how something spontaneous like that. And I don't know if realistically that actually would happen. Kind of like love at first sight type of thing. But I, I mean, again, that's just the way I envision the piece. Um, I'm probably wrong. <laughs> He's, um, I wouldn't be surprised if he texts me and be like, bro, that's not what my piece is about, bro. I'm like, I know. But that's what I love. About, but I love that a piece can take me somewhere. That to me is a great, amazing piece. When I could read something, and maybe it's about one thing, but a piece can take me to a different direction, and I love that. So I really enjoy that piece. That's how the piece spoke to me. Um, Jared, if you're listening, um, I still mean what I said when I said if I ever met you, I would give you a hug. Um, you're an amazing person, and please don't ever change, man. Be yourself always, and um, yeah, man. Um, I'll try to pop in in one of your lives soon. Um, again, I'm still trying to get into the jits of uh, Instagram here and there, so I'm I'm still I'm still getting back into the groove with moderation of time and stuff. So uh, yeah. So, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining me on my very first episode of season two of Jam Them Sessions Live. And on my next episode, I will have a guest. I will announce it soon. And I can't wait. So again, I do want to get to know each and one, each and each and every one of you. And I'm actually excited for this. So again, hit me up if you want to be a part of, you know. And I and hey, you can you can say hey, I've been part of this podcast. Check it out. And hey, this is cool because you can do this or you can do that. Or if you have ideas, suggestions as well, throw them at me. As a matter of fact, I'll probably make a post about it too soon. Um, so thank you guys for joining Jandam Sessions Live, episode one of season two. God bless you and have a great night.